Hey everybody and welcome back to another YouTube video. Today I'm going to be talking about how to get research opportunities as a high schooler, um, sharing templates for resumes, finding researchers that you might be interested in working under, um, writing emails to those researchers to actually get the opportunity to work with them, and how to write your personal statements for those emails. I'll be sharing templates to all of those and they'll all be linked in the description below. If you find value in this video, consider subscribing and dropping a like for the YouTube algorithm and maybe following me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and so joining my email newsletter, all of which are linked in the description below. So basically, research in high school, you're not going to end up publishing a paper. You most likely will not end up publishing a paper because it doesn't really make sense for a high schooler to publish a high caliber academic paper. You don't need to do research to get into a good college like this post that was posted four hours ago and I just saw right before I started recording this video says people think that colleges expect you to you know be God basically but they really don't you do, most people that get into top schools haven't done research you don't need to have done research to get into top schools and you really should be motivated to do research because you want to learn more about a subject and gain experience and see if academia might be right for you but you also get the chance to do that in college so without further ado let's get into talking about how you can get, you know, research opportunities. So the first thing that we're going to take, oops, I'm not going to show that. The first thing we're going to take a quick look at is resume. You're going to need a resume to submit, just to send along with your application, uh, just to send along with your cold emails to professors, because they want to see what type of knowledge you have. So on this resume here, uh, I put I put experience in computer science that I've had because I was applying, well not applying, I was just looking for some sort of a computer science uh, research internship. I, don't, I didn't care what I was doing, I just wanted to be working in the field of computer science, hopefully machine learning. This research intern position was not actually on my resume at the time. Uh, this is my updated resume after the internship. So this is what I got based on everything else in the resume. So I listed my previous experience in the field. Uh, most of it just came from being a technical writer, writing articles uh, on my website, sending out a weekly newsletter, and just maintaining code base for my personal blog. I listed relevant courses, uh, my education, my high schools that I've been to, relevant courses, honors, awards that I got. Um, I didn't get National Merit semifinalist before then because this was the summer after my junior year, so this came after that. Extra curriculums I had and skills I had on my resume. I don't think this is the best resume, but you need some form of a resume um, to send out to people, and I will link this in the description to this video as well. So, quick disclaimer. I didn't do this entirely by myself. Uh, most of the work besides writing uh, these personal statements and resume was not done by me. It was facilitated by my school, so I'm lucky in that regard. Uh, my school was the one actually sending out emails uh, on the behalf of me and a bunch of other students to professors, which probably gave our emails a little bit more credibility and made it easier for us to actually get the positions uh, to work under these wonderful professors. So what I'll be doing is just showing you guys um, what my school taught me and how they really helped us get these uh, research experience positions uh, with uh, in these labs. So one of the most useful, oh, this is already open. One of the most useful things that my school uh, made me do was do this five research interests and motivations goals thing. <coughs> So basically, we were to note down five areas of interest that we had to conduct research in. For me, that was natural language processing, computational economics, uh, computer vision, just plain old computer science, and math, and financial mathematics, for which I never found anybody to work with. Once you have areas that you feel like you're interested in, try and look at universities around you uh, to find to find the departments 
and research groups that are conducting research in those areas. When you do find researchers, uh, well not researchers, research groups in those areas of research, look through uh, the researchers there and see who's working on projects that are similar to what that just seem really interesting to you. Write down a brief summary um, about what they're working on. And then just compile a list, a long list, because most people are going to reject you. Most people are going to either just not read your email or say, oh, thanks for the, thanks for the email, but I'm not interested in having a high schooler work under me in my lab. Which is completely fair because we're high schoolers, and to be honest, we don't really know exactly what we're doing, so we can't be expected to do a lot. So if you do end up getting a mentor, be very thankful to them because they're really nice. So I found a, I looked at UNC's Computer Sciences Natural Language Processing Group, which is really, really good. Um, lucky to live in North Carolina. And I was able to find some people that did natural language processing research in my area. I wrote down what they worked on. And then I kept this information, found their emails, put their emails down in a spreadsheet along with all of this information. So I was ready to send out emails when the time came. After you've gotten all of these, uh, all your potential mentors uh, written down, you've researched what they're researching. At that point, you will just, they also made us pick five things not to explore. You don't need to do this because the school is not going to be finding mentors for you. You're doing it yourself. After that, we were to cultivate a research interest statement which is basically just what are your goals for this research experience and make sure they're reasonable goals. Don't be like, I want to get this published in nature because you're not going to get it published in nature. So my research goals were to learn how to analyze data and then go on to construct a story with that data in a professional setting, to understand how computer science research is conducted on a professional level, to apply my computer science skills to linguistics problems, and to use mathematics, to use mathematics and algorithmic thinking to make progress in machine learning, and to learn how to effectively communicate the outcome of my work. So keeping those research goals in mind, you can construct a motivation statement. Uh, mine was, I am deeply interested in the way that humans interact with each other, especially interactions involving language. I've also been fascinated with the way computers can learn through machine learning models. I wanted to explore something at the intersection of these two fields, natural language processing. Natural language processing could help computers learn conversationally and understand human language, and that is something I want to work on intensely. It's not the most well-written thing, but it got the job done eventually. Also pick two core skills that really interest you. Uh, pick one core skill that really interests you, and one core skill that just interests you the least. Uh, the one that interests you the most, make sure to emphasize that when you're writing emails, and I'll talk a little bit more about this shortly. Uh, the one that interests you the least, um, just don't go for any opportunities that might involve that. So the core skill that really wanted to, that interested me the most was computation and working with data because I wanted to write code while helping conduct machine learning research because that's what I'm really interested in. I want to be a machine learning researcher one day uh, or machine learning engineer and both of those would require me to develop my computation and data skill. Okay, so moving on to the personal statement that you'll be sending out to your potential mentors or the people that you want to work under. You need to keep in mind that they're really, they're, they get a lot of emails every day, uh, a lot, and most of those emails are a lot more important than the one you're sending them, so you want to keep your short, sweet, and very to the point so that they immediately get an understanding of who you are, what you do, why you want to work with them. And something that's key to do this is before you email a mentor, find their research papers uh, which you can do by going to scholar.google.com, uh, searching up whoever your mentor is, uh, who your potential mentor is, search for them, and then just look through everything that they've written, or just going to their personal website, because most researchers have a personal website uh, at their research group. So if you go to UNC NLP group, you can go to the people, uh, then you find faculty, PhD students, uh, all who you can do research under and then it'll link you to their website and they have their publications. Pick one of the, pick a few of these to read through that you're, that you find interesting, a few papers to read through that you find inter interesting. And then really, really understand the paper if you can, although it's probably hard. Um, so take a while to read through it. 
uh, briefly summarize why you liked it, uh, what interested you about it, and then include that in your personal statement using your motivation statement that you already have. So my personal statement is here. I'm not going to read through it all because my voice is getting very tired. But essentially, you start by saying, I'm seeking a mentor in the field of natural language processing due to interest due to your motivation statement. Fit it in there. Talk about what your goals for the experience is. And towards the end, explain what draws you to working with that particular mentor, uh, usually by talking about one of their research papers. And then just harp on about that for a while, um, a little bit. Thank them for their consideration and use of their time on your email, uh, even though they could be doing a lot more important things. Sign off, attach your resume, maybe link some projects that you've worked on, and send off the email. Hope for the best. It'll take a while for them to respond. They might never respond. That's why it's good to have a lot of mentors if you really want to, potential mentors, if you really want to conduct research. Again, I'll link everything that I've talked about in the description. Hopefully this helps you. Um, and quick disclaimers, doing research is not a guarantee that you're going to get into a grade school. I just got rejected from Caltech like a week ago, and then I got deferred from MIT. Well, two weeks ago, Caltech, and one week ago, MIT. So it's not a guarantee that you're going to get into a good school. But it's a valuable experience. You'll gain a lot. I actually did end up writing a paper. Um, because I was working with somebody else, another high school student uh, from my grade on it, and we actually got a paper done. We didn't submit it to our journal because it wasn't good enough. It was our first research paper, uh, so it's not going to be good enough for our journal publication. We're high school students, but our high school does have a journal that we'll submit to, which isn't really prestigious or anything. It's just for fun to show off what uh, students do. So keep in mind, keep that in mind. Have realistic goals about your research experience. You are not going to win a Nobel Prize for your research. You're n probably not going to get it published in a uh, in a journal, uh, especially if you're the one who has a lot of control over your project. Because most of the times, when you're looking for a mentor, you're not going to have a lot of control over the project. I was lucky; my mentor gave me a lot of freedom uh, over the project that we did, but most mentors they'll have you work under them you'll be doing like you'll be doing pretty you'll be you'll be you'll be the pretty much stereotypical intern you'll be learning a lot but you'll also be doing tasks that basically are like everybody else in the lab is like eh, i don't really want to do this so they give it to you but work hard during uh, your experience and have realistic goals another very important thing to keep in mind along with having realistic goals about your experience is that you need to figure out when you're going to be working, right? I did my experience during the summer uh, after my junior year, which is a great time to do it because besides college applications, you're not really doing much. Um, so I was doing research, college applications. It was a pretty fun way to spend uh, a lot of my summer. If you're going to try doing the school year, That'll be a little bit harder because you have school all day and then you will have the evenings and you have to do homework, maybe college applications, participate in other clubs. So you'll have, you won't have a lot of time really to do your research in a way that'll be helpful to your mentor and helpful to you as a learning experience. So figuring out times for that would be nice. I would suggest doing it in the summer because they'll be a little bit more free you'll be a lot more free and it'll just be easier for them to communicate to you because you're free all the time and you can just talk to them whenever they need it. Uh, and you need to be very flexible with whoever says okay to you because they're really nice people if they said okay to you and you owe them a lot. But again, I'll reiterate because I saw this post a while ago right before I started filming. You don't need to do research to get into a top school. You don't need to have played an instrument at Carnegie Hall to get into a top school, and you don't need to have interned at a well in the Fortune 500 to get into a top school, but it really feels like everybody does that already. Most people that claim that they've done like research or whatever um, and have a published paper in a journal didn't really do a whole lot 
um, they just pipetted a few things in the lab and then learned a lot of things and got their name put on the paper. Of course, all of these research experiences are valuable. I hope you gained something from this video. Um, I'll also have a written up I also have a written up version of the post and I'll post it on Reddit on the A2C subreddit and I'll link it in the description whenever I write it. But hey, if you like the video, drop a like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and join my email newsletter. And if you have any questions, comment, uh, DM me on Instagram, or just DM me on Instagram and I'll try and get back to you with answers. Also, if you happen to be in North Carolina, uh, I can help you find uh, mentors. If you need it, I can just help you if you just DM me on Instagram. Uh, because I'm basically done with my college applications. Let's go, dude. Let's go. That's big. So if that's you, let me know. I'll help.